I'm Tina Castanares. I'm a retired doctor. I am speaking from Squim, Washington, where I'm spending the summer. It's August 2nd, 2021. Hi, I'm Linda DeSitter. It's August 2nd. I'm talking from Portland, Oregon. Boy, we go back. I have a question for you to start. When we met, we were both family doctors, and I didn't even meet you in Hood River, where we later lived and worked. I met you in Los Angeles. Then we got to work together for years as family doctors and you became an ER doctor and all, but in those years you were working with our community hospice, Hospice of the Gorge. And I wanted to ask how you got started in that. I got started in hospice when I was in the ER. Jim Wade was looking for someone to cover Hospice of the Gorge while he went on vacation. He kind of looked around the community and said, Linda, I think you'd be good at this. I need a vacation. I said, Okay, Jim, just tell me what to do. I'm an ER doctor, used to be a family doctor. Tell me what you want me to do. He did, and he took a vacation, and then he took another vacation, and I covered again. By the third vacation, I decided that it was time to start getting some education. I went to some conferences, did a whole bunch of reading. really felt like I liked the hospice work a lot. It felt like it was meaningful work on both physical, emotional, and spiritual level. And then... He said, Linda, would you like to be medical director? And I said, no, but Tina would be great. (laughs) (laughs) Ever since medical school, I wanted to be involved somehow in hospice because it was coming about in those years in the United States. And so I was hearing about it. I was at uh, Los Angeles County Medical Center in my training, and I felt like We were not always treating patients at the end of life the way we should, but it was in the years before there were laws that protected patients' rights around that, and it was the years before it protected doctors who felt it would be right to stop life support. It was in some early years, in other words, and hospice being an alternative to all that medical treatment in hospitals just really appealed to me. Years went on and I was in rural practice in Hood River. There was only one hospice and there was only one hospice doctor and I loved him, Dr. Wade, and then Linda, you were helping him. But I never imagined I would have a chance to do it. So it was a wonderful invitation, but I was a newbie. Later, we both got our board certification in that specialty. It was a huge honor to me to get to do it. Very fulfilling. How have you integrated all this kind of medical work, hospice, your ER and family medicine background, and then you've gone on and you got a public health master's degree. How does it all work together? <laughs> That's a great question, Tina. <laughs> I trained in family medicine, just like you did, then went into ER to kind of do more shift work when my kids were little and got pulled into hospice, like I said, and realized I really loved hospice. I was seeing what I would call kind of bad deaths in the ER and really more beautiful deaths in hospice. I kind of made the decision as I was doing both that I really wanted to move more towards the hospice end of things. Between delivering babies and the teamwork of hospice, I feel like I got to do the two best things in medicine. (laughs) We got to do both ends, didn't we? (laughs) We did. Cradle to grave. Because of our cultural fear of dying, you really get it. It's part of your fabric that this is natural. It's a constant reminder that illness and eventually dying are just part of the arc of life. And it's nice to get to have our hands in that, I think. It's not my original thought that death is not principally a medical issue. And I think that's true of illness too. It just helps to get to walk on that road, I think, with people. Mm -hmm.